I'm DJ Psyched, and you're watching the Get Psyched YouTube channel. Let's get psyched about YouTube. What's up? I'm DJ Psyched, aka Leanne, and you're listening to the Get Psyched podcast. I have been doing this podcast for a whopping two years now. That's not a very long time, but it is a really cool milestone for me. Two years feels actually kind of short, uh, just considering how much has happened in that period of time. But since it happened between 2020 and 2022, it's, pr it's not that crazy <laughs> to imagine that that period of time feels a little stretched out. Um, but doing this podcast for two years, something about like just having that realization, like I was literally sitting at this computer the other day doing some work and I like pulled up my calendar and I saw that I had marked the anniversary of the podcast and I was like, oh snap, this is, this, this is the two year anniversary of the podcast. Like I saw that on my calendar and I was like, wait a minute, has it really been two years yet? And it just kind of blew my mind and it made me realize that I, I had to address it. I had to address the two years. I had to address what's going on because I've kind of not really been uploading much on my stuff. Not very consistently over the last few months. That has a lot to do with just life. Life happens, you know, and it's been probably the most um, changing of life, like two years. Like not saying like, oh, it's been life changing things. I mean, it kind of has because I'm engaged now, but <laughs> what I'm referring to is the fact that um, there's just been so much going on. You know, there's those transitions in our life. I think that the these first few years before you become like a steady adult, it's when the most change happens in your life. And I went from graduating college to being a whole adult person right during this pandemic, which just kind of made it an extremely hectic time because I just entered the workforce and the workforce is a horrible place to enter right now. And so it, it's kind of just been this really confusing thing where I do still have a motivation to create. I still have a motivation to make something of myself and to become a creator, an artist in some way that I can just do it more regularly and steadily and with more focus. But it's really hard to do that when I'm also just trying to, you know, get my feet on the ground, pay my rent, start to build my home, my family and my plans for life. I've tried not to beat myself up too much about that, though, because these last two years have been a lot for everyone and I know that like it's just a transition period and two years is still fairly young. So I just kind of wanted to actually give some real updates about that because I don't do long form podcasts really much anymore. And whenever I do, it's always about a topic that is just certainly not about me or my life. Um, but I figure since it's my two year anniversary on this podcast, I'm allowed to get a little personal here and just talk about things. And I think that a lot of people can relate to this. The pandemic has certainly changed a lot for me and growing up, you know, and being an adult now has changed a lot for me. And it's kind of hard navigating uh, the creative space and the personal space online while also taking care of myself, my family, my life, and then trying to cultivate my art at the same time. And I think this just been a lot compounding at a time, but I'm ready to get back into the swing of it because the one thing that I know for sure is I will never have a, the successful art life that I want if I don't start somewhere, if I don't get zero views on my videos for like a few years, if I don't, you know, put my heart and soul into projects that never get seen or don't take off. I have a really fun project actually that I'm really, really excited about that I'm working on right now. And I know that it could maybe not succeed and that's fine because you really just have to not get noticed for a long time before you can and make something that you're really proud of. I, I'm just saying that because that's kind of how I like to think of the podcast when I envision it now. I think of it as I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm figuring out what I want my art style to be, what I want to present as an artist and what I want to create, while also doing it on a very public platform where you can see if you watch right now that I'm still growing, I still have a lot of work to do, and that this podcast, I hope if you listen to it, you at least think it's mildly entertaining for the time and that it has potential because that's what I see out of the Get Psyched podcast and the mission or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I, I like to think of it as the, the Get Psyched universe because at this point, I feel like I have this universe I'm trying to create where I kind of use my podcast, my videos, and my YouTube channel, my three main things. I try to make them coincide with each other but also feel like their own elements. And I also just am trying to incorporate more physical art form into that kind of stuff, which I haven't done a whole lot of yet, but my fiance did start a painting business and I'm really excited about that because she's an awesome painter. And every now and again, I'm gonna be painting with her because she's my fiance and that's a fun thing to do together. <laughs> and I'm hoping to, to kind of cultivate um, different forms of art to also include in my little universe. 
Well, I'm talking about this because it's the it's the two years of this this little universe being born. And for any creator who is a small creator out there like me, I think you kind of understand what I'm saying about the whole feeling of like, it's it's got to grow, it's got to become something. And if you don't know where to start, I mean, I just have to start, right? I'm sure you feel the same way if you're a small creator, right? You just got to start somewhere, you got to make something. Uh, so wh where did Get Psych get started? I'm just going to give you the little, the rundown about Get Psych, because this is the two year, like, benchmark and one day i'm gonna look back at this and see where i'm at and um so i'm just gonna tell you where i am now and what the history was before so that every two years i can update you and you can get a better understanding of what's changed since the beginning and we can have a whole little thing here of the history of the get psyched universe so the get psyched universe started in january 27th of 2020 where maddie and i from wknc recorded a podcast on the history of paramore now, this is when the podcast was mainly music it started off with like the history of paramore topics about music let's talk music it was very music focused which makes sense because i was a dj at a radio station where i also did daytime music directing and you know i did so much with wknc it only made sense that the podcast was all about music at the start but i love talking about things that i find interesting i mean you can ask my fiance i probably talk her head off so much when i find something interesting and she she's gracious enough to listen and uh, so i ended up expanding topics and including new segments doing topics on health and uh, expanding on you know social things like where i talked to uh dr nacost where i got into psychology i had another uh, psychology professor uh, dr kelsey also came on so i just started expanding the idea a little bit further back when the, the podcast started. And back when the podcast started, I was still in college. So I was doing this with WKNC on a very regular schedule doing weekly uploads, which is why I think I was able to maintain more of a, a sense of understanding as to what topics I was touching on because they were so regular. I just had to keep coming up with episodes. Also, I had more access to networking in college, which is why my DIY series used to be so big and really doesn't exist anymore. It's been kind of hard for me to network during the pandemic and honestly anyone who knows me knows that i'm absolutely horrible at checking my phone so being stuck at home a lot has not been good for my like networking abilities i also hate the term networking i don't really like networking myself but i do like to meet people and if they're really cool i invite them to the podcast and i actually have invited someone to the podcast that i met at work um but they never they never email me back so that happens sometimes but i have tried uh to keep that series going because i do still love the diy series I just haven't had the opportunity to get a guest on that series in a while. But yeah, that's that's kind of why things were so different back then. My situation was just incredibly different. You know, I, I had a, access to the WKNC studio, so it was just a little easier. Just invite guests to the studio, we come talk, and that was that. Um, but I haven't really done much of that. I have done DIY series since the pandemic started, you know, online with friends and people that I met online. That's how I met Jonah. So yeah, when the podcast started, it started out mostly music. I got a few extra topics in, and then, and then I just made podcasts. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about that. I will say that I looked back at my old podcast because I had my friend PME on as one of my first guests ever on the podcast, and then he made an episode with me a little while later, which we should we should totally do another episode together, PME. If you're watching this, this is my test to see if you watch this one. Uh, so hit me up so we can make another episode. But we went back like. In the second podcast that I did with PME, we talk about just how horrible that first podcast sounds on my podcast because it's just so over edited. Like I was chopping everything up to the point where it did not sound like something you'd want to listen to. Something I wouldn't I wouldn't listen to it anyways. But anyhow, yeah, it was a, a good podcast episode. I had a lot of fun doing those. But I will say that I think I've gotten a little bit better at one, just being able to talk to the camera and feel more natural getting like better at talking on the microphone and also understanding that when you're doing a podcast it is totally fine to sound like a person having a conversation and to just give into it it's actually a lot better to do that than to sound like a weird robot because there's nothing entertaining about a robot well, there's a lot entertaining about a conversation so the podcast was slowly evolving at that time point but there was one thing that was really lacking i felt like there wasn't much of a vision or a mission or a purpose to my podcast. I felt like it was just kind of stuff. I was just putting out episodes and they weren't all horrible. I'm not gonna sit here and say that. I love some of those first episodes. I love the guests that I had on. I love the opportunity that I had to meet some of those people because they 
were just really cool. But I will say that, like, as far as having, like, a, a very concrete mission and image and unity to those podcasts, I don't, I don't think there was one. I don't think it existed at the time. And I think that that is still one of the things about the podcast that I'm working through is that I feel like a lot of the times it's not very clear what my vision or mission is. So I've been working on that. Um, but needless to say, there was consistency at the beginning of my podcast. There was themes at the beginning of my podcast. There just wasn't much of a mission. And that all kind of started falling apart when, you know, March of 2020 happened and things changed for the entire world. Um, around that time, I had, you know, like a lot of people, I had to make decisions about my life. And one of those decisions was, do I finish college in the summer and move on after that? Because thanks to the pandemic, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to go back to campus in the fall or I wasn't likely. So, yeah, I made that decision. I decided to finish school in the summer because in the long run, it just would have made my life a lot easier than sticking around in the fall and having to do the online class thing and having to find housing near campus, but also struggling to work. You know, it was just like a whole, it logistically didn't make sense for me to stay another semester instead of just doing summer classes because of what happened in the world. So that's what happened. And when, when that happened, I went from being a college student to an adult. <laughs> and at the exact same time, I met a girl. <laughs> so it, it kind of became a very complicated situation because a part of me had been planning to move back home, just it made sense, save money um, in the middle of a, a world crisis. But when I met Ella, who is now my fiance, I didn't want to leave the area because I was really, really into Ella. So I didn't leave the area. I stayed in the area and I had to start finding work. And that's kind of when I, I had my first creative drain. When I first moved into this apartment, I still had my like creative hype like I was like yeah college is over I have equipment I'm gonna make amazing stuff and I, I think I made like my studio tour that was one of my big videos I made here I made a couple of videos they were pretty decent at the time and then I fell off because I actually ended up just being really I don't want to overuse the term depressed but that was kind of the feeling I was getting because I was having a really hard time finding work I was just stressed out about the situation in the world and I felt like my creative energy was just draining. And so it kind of just became this down cycle of emotions, very negative emotions. And um, that's when my creativeness took a, a really big drop. And that's when I stopped posting weekly. And I think went to like, it was either a bi-weekly schedule at that point or an every month schedule. But yeah, that was kind of like the first start of the, the decline. And as I started getting work, um, I think that decline got worse. <laughs> Um, because I was busy with work, but eventually after getting into a, a decent job at the time, I felt a little better. My, my luck started turning up. I was pretty happy about how things were going and I started creating a little bit more again. I do think though that a lot of stuff that was going on at that time made my creative life kind of plummet <laughs> in, in a lot of ways because I look back at it and my living situation, the situation I had with my roommate was really unhealthy and really stressful and it kind of caused me to just be a human and not not be in the mood to put my full effort into things and not be psyched <laughs> i was in a really down headspace because i felt like i was being mistreated i felt like life was unfair and i let all those feelings kind of get the better of me so yeah that was a big part of my journey at the time is that life kept changing and there were so many new changes happening you know having new jobs having my first apartment where the rent is on my shoulders <laughs> having um worked to get my my license and try to get a car and there was just a lot going on at a certain period of time and the more things that happened in life the less creating i did and the less effort i put into creating videos even though I had, like, right before moving in here, I had gone through what I think was one of my, like, best periods in, in my creative field because I had the motivation to set up my camera and really get, like, high-quality-looking videos and, and good-sounding videos because my mic and stuff. I had pretty decent equipment. I still do have pretty decent equipment, but uh, I'll, I'll explain <laughs> uh, later why that's not the case at the moment. I kind of lost some stuff and some of my equipment's not working very well so even though i have good equipment it's not working and i can't afford to fix it so i'm back to kind of old styled equipment so i'm sorry my videos are not going to be super high quality for a while but i will do the best i can with the resources i have 
Anyhow, yeah, so a lot of things were starting to take their toll as to why I was creating less, but eventually I did start working a lot more regularly and I got a huge swing of motivation and I started creating a lot. And this is around the time that I started the website, which became, you know, the, you know, there's the Get Psyched blog now. My YouTube channel was also one of my big focuses. And I had this job, which this is really just a cool part of the Get Psyched mission, I think, because it was, it was very unexpected. I just got this job when I first graduated college because I needed work. So I applied for this marketing type position where I was working with a very small business owner and just, you know, writing copy for her and getting in on her business meetings. And she was huge on organized business. So she like even paid for some like online courses for me to take to learn about business, to learn about marketing, to learn about building a brand. And it was amazing because she taught me a lot of stuff that really, really helped me out with my mission and with my organization and with feeling better about creating. At the time, I think I even made a few videos relevant to the topic because the simple concept of organizing your creative, your creative endeavors and, and what, whatnot, it's so essential because that resistance being gone makes it so much easier to create. Like I feel so good when I create something because I know automatically where to save it to next and then what's the next step in the process and then where do I put this and it's honestly like at one point I used to have it written down so I knew which step to do, but it's so fluid now that after I record a video, I know exactly where to put it. I know exactly where to pull it out later when I need it. And because there's no resistance, like I can find stuff, no problem. I can save stuff, no problem. I feel like when I do have that moment that I want to create, it's so much easier to just jump into creating. So what I'm saying is having that job was such a cool and unique opportunity because it taught me stuff that I have really been applying and using towards my own personal endeavors in entrepreneurship and in understanding marketing because as, as much as I hate the words marketing or, or uh, what is it called? Networking. I, I still understand why those terms exist because there is a lot of theory behind a lot of this stuff and there's a lot of good practices you can put in with marketing and branding and stuff that even if you hate those terms, it's worth knowing a little bit about them if you want to be some kind of entrepreneur because like, one of the things I wanted to talk about today on the podcast is that yes, I do this because I love it. Yes, I do this because I find it fun. Yes, you know, this to me is like really fun and exciting and it's something I want to get a little bigger someday because one, I just like creating, so it'd be dope to create something awesome that a lot of people enjoy. And two, I am a human. I need to live. I need to pay rent. And I want to build a family. And I think that if I had a creative endeavor that could be putting actual money in my pocket, I, I tell you this right now, I don't make a penny <laughs> off of any of this, all right? My YouTube channel does not garnish enough views to make money. My podcast doesn't either. There's a whole, a whole lot to that, but I have not made any money off of, of this. So this is strictly for fun, but one day I would like to make money off of it. I don't think that's selling out at all. I think that's wanting to, to live and wanting to have the life that I want to have, which isn't like extreme luxury. I actually really hate luxury. I've made, you know, a blog post about money before. I think luxury is kind of stupid. I just want to have enough money to where I can raise a family, where I can have children with my fiance, where I can afford to marry my fiance in a very awesome way that we would like to be married. Um... And I would like to marry my fiance and put like less stress on her shoulders because she knows that we have everything handled and we can live good, healthy, happy lives without worrying about money. That's like a dream, all right? And I don't think that's selling out at all to want that. So I would love to one day, at some point, make creating like my career, my life, my passion. So that's where we're at, all right? It's, <laughs> it's 2022, two years into the podcast. And where I left off on the history is that I had this upswing in creating because I figured out a lot of tips about creating through this job I had. This was a period in time where creating was like, boom, like banging, I was creating more, I was consuming more content. Um, I, I kind of was on and off with reading all, this whole time. I mean, reading is like something I really love to do, but whenever I get into different moods, sometimes I read a lot less, sometimes I read a lot more. So my reading was always on and off during all this, but, but during this peak of creating, I definitely got a lot of creating done and without getting into too much details because I really just don't like talking about my like mental health in, in, in like public spaces it's a very private thing to me but I will say that I do believe that you know mental health is an important thing to you know talk to people you're close to you about because 
I, I personally was very scared to talk to people about my mental health. And um, luckily for me, though, I did have people who would, you know, ask me about it, like my fiance and my mother and my siblings, who just kind of helped me out during that time when I didn't necessarily think I could talk to anyone about it, but they were all very forthright about helping. And that was really helpful for me. So what I'm saying is I, I after that swing of having high creative energy, I had like a really bad time with my mental health. And that took a huge toll on my creating because I had no choice but to step back like entirely for several weeks. I'm not famous. So it's not like it was like, oh, the fame is getting to me. I put a lot of pressure on myself. I have really bad habits of putting a lot of pressure on myself, getting way too involved in creating. And then it, it even affects my mood and it affects my behaviors and habits and ability to sleep and everything. It's just, it becomes, it becomes a really dangerous thing when I'm creating <laughs> like a lot, which is why like right now as it's like midnight and, and I've already done a lot today, I'm like, okay, I just got to slow down. I can't, you know, like I, 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 it's okay. It's completely fine to have certain days where I create a lot and certain days that I don't. I just try to keep myself in a balance where if I do a lot of creating today, I will only do a little creating tomorrow and the day after or you know slow it down like take breaks there are some nights where i'm just gonna lay with my fiance and watch a movie and not worry about creating and at the time when i was having my mental health problems those nights didn't exist i just couldn't tear myself away from making creating doing and constantly being active and so that just kind of took a toll on me as you would imagine like never slowing down takes a toll on people uh, so during that period of time, I just had to stop creating like altogether and that lasted a little while because I knew that if I just jumped right back into creating that wouldn't be healthy for me. I just wouldn't be a good option. So I slowed down for a period of time and during that period of time, I actually kind of was scared that maybe I wouldn't end up going back into it, into creating that maybe I wouldn't, you know, be able to just jump right, but you know, like I, I left my podcast for several months. So I was worried that when I tried to jump back into it, that maybe I wouldn't be able to do it, but I was totally able to do it. And that was awesome. I got the opportunity to continue right where I left off. And that is when I jumped into kind of the phase I'm in now, which is I was still creating somewhat, but on a very distant level. And at that point it was because one, I had to search for new employment again because my mental health just, like when my mental health wasn't doing very well, I did have to switch employment up in order to just keep myself well. And that came with new life challenges, new roommate challenges, and also new pets, which just became a lot more responsibility. And it, it got to this point where I felt like I was I felt like I was detached for several months. <laughs> I felt like I was detached from a part of myself. And I think it was a really necessary detachment and break because it taught me a lot about my relationship with the world, with my friends, with my own thoughts, and with my habits. And I know that sounds really vague, but I think if you like ever have felt the way I felt like mental wise about creating and living and all this stuff, you'd understand where I'm coming from. I think that it's kind of this strange feeling of I always wanted creating in my life, like to be a big part of my life. I've always wanted creativeness to be a huge part of me. And at some point it kind of overtook me and it kind of left me neglecting other parts of my life, neglecting seeing the world in different points of views. Life isn't all about creating. Life isn't all about the grind. All of this stuff is is very related to me. I didn't even mention how like <laughs> how bizarre my relationship with my physical health was throughout this whole journey. But I mean, I used to like go hard at the gym all the time because I was obsessed with results. I mean, that kind of went along with the bad mental uh, problems I was having where like I, I kind of had to grind 24 seven that included eating extremely restricted and working out extremely hard all the time and, and just pushing myself 24 seven and never taking a break. I mean, this is the first time in a very long time where I don't work out very often. I don't work out several times. Like I don't work out five to six times a week anymore. I do like stay active. I'm still a fairly active person. My job is very active. I, you know, I'm very active with my pets and everything. 
but I'm not doing organized workouts at the moment because it's just a, it's a thing. Sometimes you got to step back in life and not grind 24 seven, which I understand some people might be like, that's weak. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that it's perfectly healthy to step back, but I have through this podcast been able to really understand myself a little better and force myself to reflect more on what I enjoy, what I think, and what I want to do. And this two-year episode, I'm really glad that I saw the notification that the two years was coming up because this is just stuff that I've always wanted to say on the podcast and just never really had the opportunity or knew how to say it. But I think it's good for us to have this conversation right now. If, uh, if you're involved in the Get Psyched mission or anything, and if you're listening to this, you know, if you haven't listened to this before, what an interesting episode. You probably clicked off already, but if, if you have been listening to this podcast, then um, I'm glad you stuck around to listen to this. And yeah, I just, I just wanted to, to talk a little bit about how much has changed in the last two years, because a lot has changed in the last two years, and I think that changed me as a creator a lot. I think that changed me as a person a lot. I think that it's important to take breaks, but I also think that it is really helpful to be able to to come back to something with a healthier mindset. And I think that's kind of what I feel like I'm doing right now with the podcast. I am finally at a point where I feel like I'm not obsessing over what I'm doing, but I can come up with ideas choose the best ones and try to work on something and do something fun and do something meaningful and do something I enjoy. And my mentality right now on the podcast is that even though I don't have an exact topic or an exact mission to throw in your face right now, which, you know, getting psyched together is, it's a kind of like a motto more than a mission. And it does have some meaning to it, like getting psyched together. I just, I just want to be a more positive outlook type person. I like getting excited about things. I already said that. So that's kind of where that comes from. I just love getting psyched about stuff. And also it came from the fact that I was a psychology major in college, but I studied psychology because it got me hyped. It got me psyched. It got me talking and just excited about things and getting psyched together, I think is really fun because if I like a topic, you like talk, we can, we just go nuts about it. It's fun. It's just fun as hell. Like there's really no other reason I do this podcast besides it's just, it's really fun to me to just come on this, this podcast and talk about things I'm interested in. I don't think I've ever done an episode that I just was so bored and I didn't want to talk about the topic any longer. Almost all of my episodes end up longer than they need to be because I can just talk about things I find interesting time and time again. And I'll get better at not repeating myself so much because I do that a lot. But the getting psyched, it's just a cool concept. I really like it. Like doing the J-Date series with David and, and Ella is really exciting. I love that series. It's one of my favorites and we're working on it, all right? But <laughs> getting psyched, it's a motto and it does have some meaning but I feel like there's not really a mission there, not a mission statement yet. No huge driver keeping me like, oh, eye on the prize, but I'm working on it. And so, um, yeah, so now in 2022 with the podcast, I noticed recently, I know this might sound silly because I don't post that often, but but uh, I noticed recently that when I looked back at my YouTube channel, I've been doing a lot of, of videos and stuff about my geckos, which kind of happened on accident. I'm not doing that on purpose. I just make videos about stuff I'm interested in. And so I think it's kind of neat to, to kind of explore the world of reptile YouTube. I'm not trying to be a reptile YouTuber. I feel like I don't have enough experience for that because um, I would want to be very knowledgeable, very, very knowledgeable before I start doing something like that. But I do like to give care tips on Leos because honestly, they're, they're not that difficult to care for. And I've been caring for a Leo for two years and then two Leos for a little less than a year now. So I have a fair amount of experience in that one, but I thought that was pretty neat because it's kind of like a new chapter in the podcast for me, having different topics that I'm focusing on at the moment. I'm doing a lot of reading, book reviews, that kind of stuff right now. And I am hoping to get some new artists on the DIY series and to have maybe some returning guests soon. So that would be really neat as well. But yeah, I'm just getting back into everything now and uh, adjusting to my new work schedule, adjusting to my new lifestyle. And uh, yeah, the last thing I wanted to say was when I started this podcast, I was in college, I was single, <laughs> I was working two part-time jobs, I was living in an apartment under campus housing, I didn't have any kind of license or anything, and I feel like my life has changed draft drastically now because I'm engaged to Ella Perez, I have four pets, 
I have my license now and a car and I'm living in an apartment that I actually pay for myself. I have a full-time job and it's just kind of crazy to to have so much change in two years, to just feel like everything has changed so much in two years. And I definitely see it in myself. I definitely see it in this podcast and where I want to take it. And I just felt like it was worth addressing, all right? Because this podcast has been confusing, confusing. I'm sure for anyone who is not very close to me, probably doesn't make a lot of sense. And maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Maybe it makes some sense. I don't know. But when people ask me what I do, I really never know what to say. I usually will just say I write because it sounds a lot less like uh, corny than I blog and I have a YouTube and I have a podcast because that, I mean, these days that can just sound kind of bland. I think it's kind of messed up to make fun of somebody for having a podcast, blog, or YouTube because I think all those things are really cool and power to you for doing it. But there are a lot of people out there that will judge you if you say you podcast, have a blog, or do YouTube. Um, those people are losers. So, so uh, yeah, that's it. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, and I'm really happy with where I'm at personally in my life. I feel like I'm doing a slightly better job at being in touch with my, my homies and talking to my family more and just enjoying my life a lot more. I think having pets has definitely helped me with that. Also got a, this really awesome WKNC 88.1 tattoo to commemorate no, the best job I've ever had. The best in college radio here. So yeah, that's kind of my uh, two-year update. And I don't want to leave you with absolutely nothing if you've listened this far. So I figured I'd make some some little promises, but also just point, point some things out about myself, some things I want to improve, because this wouldn't be a reflection podcast if I didn't talk about the things that I could really improve on this podcast. And uh, this first one goes out to PME, who's told me to stop doing this. Part twos. I will stop saying that I will release a part two until I have actually recorded and edited that part two because I've definitely recorded some part twos that I have not released yet, which is just quite unfortunate on my behalf. So I will make sure that everything's edited before I promise a part two because it really stinks to leave a series just hanging there on YouTube. Um, I probably should do a part two to when all you've ever wanted isn't enough, but I don't really feel like sitting there and re-listening to the whole thing to even figure out what to talk about. I'd also have to reread that book, and I'm reading a lot of books right now, so that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Poor planning and not making seasonal content. Look, that's something that I would like to change because seasonal content just makes sense. If I actually want to make this a business someday, I should probably make seasonal content so people will find my videos relevant (laughs) you know like I think seasonal content is awesome it just kind of shows that you're putting a lot of thought into what you're doing and it's just it makes things feel festive you know so I do want to do more seasonal content and I just I do a really poor planning right now so that's why seasonal content has not really been feasible but this is kind of like seasonal content because it's my two-year anniversary and I actually made content for it Recording things and then releasing them months later, I do this a lot. And uh, this is not really my favorite thing for two reasons. One, I tend to get less psyched about a topic after several months, so I feel like it makes the editing phase and everything take way longer and also not be as good as it potentially could be because I've run out of ideas at that point or I've run out of props or I can't refilm something or whatever, whatever the case may be. Filming something and then doing like re- editing it and releasing it months later usually limits it a lot. So I want to stop doing that. Also, sometimes I have topics that are very relevant at the moment. Like I'll actually record something when it's relevant and then release it when it's not relevant. And I want to stop doing that because it's just wasting my own time. I really hope that these J Date podcasts can come out when it's relevant because the fourth book is coming out this year and I'm excited for that. Yeah. So wasting time planning. What I mean by that isn't that planning is a waste of time. I totally plan you know, episodes by scripting a little bit, making outlines and whatnot. But what I'm talking about is like planning that's not necessary, like focusing way too much on, oh, I don't have a mission. Like, let me make a mission statement or, oh, let me uh, make a new, make, make a new, uh, let me make a new icon or a new banner or change my brand or rebrand it. And I, all of that planning I was doing was such a waste of time because Even though I do think my banner looks a lot cooler now, I think that it was just not really helpful for me to like, like just focus on the fact that my podcast has no mission and not create because I will only figure out my mission and what I enjoy if I am creating. I truly believe that the only way for me to really figure out what I want is to just make videos, 
to put my writings out there, my podcast, whatever it is. Just put content out there, see what I like, see what people like, figure out a formula that works for me. And I just think that if I, if I spend my whole life in the planning phase for this podcast, I'm gonna get nowhere. So I'm done wasting my time just planning stuff that doesn't need planning and I just wanna start making more content and second guess myself a whole lot less because I second guessed myself a lot the last couple of months and it held me back too much. So no more second guessing, no more wasting time planning, just gonna make stuff. And I already talked about this one earlier so I'm not gonna waste a whole bunch of time on it. I'm just gonna stop over editing things because over editing is almost as bad as not editing at all. And lastly, uh, to completely go against the last point I made, not planning at all. There's definitely been times where I just don't plan something and then write it or record it and just try to put it out there. And I don't really like that content too much because I just feel like it could have been better thought out. Maybe there could have been more points made. Maybe there could have been a better execution to it. Maybe it could have had a different angle. Maybe it didn't need to be posted at all. So I tried to put a lot more planning into content before I release it. At least a little bit, at least script something, at least this, at least that, whatever. I do a little bit of planning per episode so that I feel as if my content makes a little bit more sense. But because of how my brain works, having one process kind of works, but all the time I'll kind of have to break process because a certain video feels like it needs to be done this way or that way or whatever. And I think I'll figure it out as I go along. But not planning at all is something I will not do anymore because it just makes my job a lot harder. And I think it makes my podcast or videos or whatever a little bit harder to consume because they just feel kind of whatever like it's confusing you listen to it and you're like what did i just listen to bro that's that's kind of it i mean it's been two years of doing this podcast very on and off so it's not like it's been two straight years of consistent uploading but (laughs) it has been two years nonetheless and i have been active most of that period of time so if you've been wondering what the heck is going on with the get psych podcast and what's what, you know, should I stay subscribed? The answer I'd say is yes. If you have not been subscribed, please do click subscribe. Uh, Click subscribe on YouTube, you know, follow on Spotify if that's where you're listening or Apple Podcast. If you're doing on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review if you want. That'd be kind of neat if people review my podcast because I think it's five out of five. (laughs) But uh, yeah, no, if if you don't follow or anything, then please do and like and comment below if you'd like to because um, that stuff helps me out and it would make me feel happy to know that people are enjoying this stuff. I'm really just excited. I wanna say thank you. I have 69 subscribers now and I'm really excited that I'm about to hit 70 because I remember like when I started my channel, like getting to 30 was like crazy milestone, which I actually didn't hit that long ago. Like I, it took me a very long time to get to 30. Um, So to be going almost up to 70 now, is just really amazing because even though I've been inconsistent, people have still, seen enough to decide to subscribe which is really cool to me so 70 is is my little goal to hit hopefully for this two-year anniversary so if you if you subscribe then uh you're really cool (laughs) and i really appreciate you and uh yeah i know this kind of sounds like a mess i'm really tired i didn't sleep that much last night but i wanted to record this so i could get this out there in time for the anniversary and if you haven't already you can also check out the blog and my instagram those are the main platforms that you will see me on and um i also have a tiktok that i just post my reptiles on so yeah those are all be in the comments though i just kind of had to say that because after two years those are the platforms i've decided to stick with and to kind of to build my my little audience and friendships on My final point is I want to keep in perspective how short two years really is in the grand scheme of things. A lot of really big creators, you know, they start small just like I am and they grow a lot as people. They put out really amazing content and I think that they are like the best cinematographers or the funniest people or whatever. And and I would love to be a great cinematographer someday. I love to have an amazing writing style. I'd love to put podcasts out there that blow people's minds. So I'm starting small and hoping to get somewhere someday. So I just I just want to reflect on the fact that I do have a lot of work to do. And uh, it's important to reflect on that and to kind of think of where I should go from here because I don't want to just keep pumping out content. You know, I do want to study up and learn how to make my content better every single time. And hopefully when I revisit you in two years, you will see that difference and that work 
being put into action. And that's all for today. So thank you for listening and celebrating the two-year anniversary of this podcast with me. I hope you have an amazing day. And until next time, stay psyched. Thank you so much for listening. The intro and outro beat used on this podcast was made by my friend and producer, PME. He's super talented, so make sure to check him out. His links are always in the description. And as always, let me know what you're getting psyched about. I do this podcast because I think getting psyched is done best when we do it together. So please let me know. And until next time, stay psyched.